Hello and welcome to Sunset TV. I am Rini Choudhury. With me is Manoj Verma, and you are watching a special report where we have been discussing the un interim budget 2024, which was tabled in Parliament today by Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs, Shrimati Nirmala Sitaraman. In her budget uh, speech, Ms. Sitaraman outlined four major pillars. Yuva, Mahilai, Garib and Anadata, who would form the bedrock of development and progress as India marches ahead on its economic journey. She also outlined that the government's focus would remain on GDP, governance, development and performance, as India strives to achieve the status of Viksit Bharat by 2047. <laughs> जाहिर तौर पे अंतरिम बजट पर आज पूरे देश की निगाहें लगी हुई थी हालांकि यह पूर्ण बजट नहीं है क्योंकि चुनावी साल है लेकिन इसके बावजूद पिछले कई वर्षों में जिस तरह देश की अर्थव्यवस्था में एक बड़ा बदलाव देखने को मिला है और आगे का रोड मैप दो को लक्ष्य रखकर विकसित भारत का निर्माण करने का जो सरकार का लक्ष्य है उस दृष्टि से इस अंतरिम बजट को भी खासा महत्वपूर्ण माना जा रहा है केंद्रीय बजट भाषण में अपने केंद्रीय वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण जी ने देश की अर्थव्यवस्था को लेकर जो एक बड़ा बदलाव पिछले एक दशक में देखने को मिला है इसका खास तौर पर उल्लेख किया आइए सबसे पहले सुनते हैं उन्होंने क्या कहा द इंडियन इकोनॉमी हैज विटनेस्ड प्रोफाउंड पॉजिटिव ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया आर लुकिंग अहेड टू द फ्यूचर with hope and optimism, with the blessings of the people, when our government under the visionary and dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi assumed office in 2014, the country was facing enormous challenges with Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas as its mantra. The government overcame those challenges in right earnest. Structural reforms were undertaken. Pro-people programs were formulated and implemented promptly. Conditions were created for more opportunities for employment and entrepreneurship. The economy got a new vigor. The fruits of development started reaching the people at scale. The country got a new sense of purpose and hope. Naturally, the people blessed the government with a bigger mandate. In the second term, our government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister doubled down on its responsibilities to build a prosperous country with comprehensive development of all people and all regions. Our government strengthened its mantra to Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas and Sabka Vishwas our development philosophy covered all elements of inclusivity, namely social inclusivity through coverage of all strata of the society and geographical in inclusivity through development of all regions of the country. With the whole of nation approach of Sabka Prayas, the country overcame the challenges of once in a century pandemic took long strides towards Atmanirbhar Bharat, committed to Panch Pran, and laid solid foundations for the Amritkal. As a result, as a result, our young country has high aspirations, pride in its present, and hope and confidence for a bright future. We expect that our government, based on its stupendous work, will be blessed again by the people with a resounding mandate. अपने अंतरिम बजट भाषण में केंद्रीय वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण ने विकास को लेकर भी कई महत्वपूर्ण बातें कही सरकार का जो लक्ष्य रहा है देश के विकास का आर्थिक सामाजिक दृष्टि से उसका उल्लेख किया निर्मला सीतारमण ने कहा कि सरकार ने अपनी योजनाओं के जरिए समाज के हर वर्ग का कल्याण करने की कोशिश की है हर तबके तक पहुंचने की कोशिश की है आइए सुनते हैं निर्मला सीतारमण जी ने क्या कहा इंक्लूसिव डेवलपमेंट एंड ग्रोथ आर ह्यूमेन एंड इंक्लूसिव अप्रोच टू डेवलपमेंट इज अ मार्क एंड डेलिबरेट डिपार्चर फ्रॉम द अर्लियर अप्रोच ऑफ प्रोविशनिंग अप टू विलेज लेवल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स विद दस प्रोविशन इन द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स हाउ 
have targeted each and every household and individual through housing for all, har ghar jal, electricity for all, cooking gas for all, bank accounts and financial services for all in record time. The worries about food, the worries about food have been eliminated through free ration for 80 crore people. Minimum support, minimum support prices for the produce of Annadatta are periodically increased appropriately. These and the, base, and the provision of basic necessities have enhanced real income in the rural areas. Their economic needs could be addressed, thus spurring growth and generating jobs. Social justice. Our government is working with an approach to development that is all round, all pervasive, and all inclusive. Sarvangin, Sarvasparshi, or Sarvasamaveshi. It covers all castes and people at all levels. We are working to make India a Vikasit Bharat by 2047. For achieving that goal, we need to improve people's capability and empower them. Previously, social justice was mostly a political slogan. For our government, social justice is an effective and necessary governance model. The saturation, the saturation approach of covering all eligible people is the true and comprehensive achievement of social justice. This is secularism in action, reduces corruption, and prevents nepotism, prevents bhai bhati jawad. There is transparency and assurance that benefits are delivered to all eligible people. The resources are distributed fairly all, regardless of their social standing, get access to opportunities. We are addressing systemic inequalities that had plagued our society. We focus on outcomes and not on outlays, so that the social economic transformation is achieved. Joining us in this discussion is Shri Sabhyasachi Shaha, Associate Professor, RIS, and Shri S.K. Jindal, Chairman, Investment and Capital Markets, ASOCAM. Uh, my first question to Mr. Jindal. Uh, we just celebrated the 75th uh, year of uh, our republic, and uh, in fact, Kartavya Path resonated with the theme of Nari Shakti. So my first question is actually going to touch upon this aspect. In her budget speech today, the finance minister mentioned that female enrollment in higher education has gone up by 28% over the past 10 years. In a country where women have traditionally faced social and cultural barriers and constraints to education, particularly to higher education, what does this signify? And what does it mean going ahead for female labor force participation rate in particular? Uh, as I look at if you see the budgets, earlier budgets also, they have been very, very focused on the female side because it was not uh, represented fully and they, know, they knew the potential is tremendous there. Right. So that is why they are focusing on those special areas where the po potential is tremendous, but some, due to some reason they could not be utilized. So that is one reason that why they, they are focusing on women and rightly so. We cannot leave them behind. Everywhere you see at uh, different levels, even they have gone ahead of men. Absolutely. You see the results, merit list, etc., sector, et sector, you will find they are leading m most of the places. Right. Uh, they lead. So that potential is still a lot of potential balance there, and that is why they are focusing. The resources one has, has to utilize those resources where the most potential is there, and optimum utilization can be done. Absolutely. Yes. Sabha Sachi Ji, my question is that we talk about the women first, because the women are the women of the women, 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 
बल्कि सरकार की योजनाओं में जितना भी देखने को मिला प्राथमिकता में महिलाएं रही वो चाहें ऋण देने का मामला हो योजनाओं का लाभ महिलाओं को मिले उसमें हमने देखा एजुकेशन में भागीदारी बढ़े उसका भी जो उल्लेख अभी रिन्नी चौधरी जी ने किया उस संदर्भ में ये जानना चाहता हूँ कि इस अंतरिम बजट में भी महिलाओं का खास तौर से उल्लेख किया निर्मला सीतारमण जी ने दो का विकसित भारत महिलाओं की दृष्टि से संतरम बजट को और भविष्य के भारत की दृष्टि से आप कैसे देखते हैं आ, पहली बात धन्यवाद मुझे आज शो में बुलाने के लिए आज बहुत महत्वपूर्ण दिन है बजट का दिन सारे लोगों का नज़र बजट पे रहता है आ, ये इंटरिम बजट हालांकि इंटरिम बजट है बट महत्व तो कुछ कम नहीं है जी। जो दृष्टि और रोड मैप विजन सब मिलता है आ, ये वीमेन लेड डेवलपमेंट का जो पैराडाइम है अभी ये सरकार 10 साल में जो अचीव की है उसका आंकड़ा हमारे सामने है यू नो यू फील प्राउड कल राष्ट्रपति जी ने ये बात रखी देश के सामने वी फील प्राउड कि आज आज देश की राष्ट्रपति एक महिला है राज देश की वित्त मंत्री एक महिला है से उससे ही एक पता चलता है कि देश में एक माहौल जो हम देखने को मिल रहा है कि वीमेन लेड डेवलपमेंट का वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है ये बात हमने जी ट्वेंटी में भी पिछले साल जो जी ट्वेंटी का प्रायोरिटीज़ था उसमें भी वीमेन लेड डेवलपमेंट का बात रखा तो अभी ये दस साल में क्या क्या बदलाव आए हैं थोड़े थोड़े कदम लिए गए बड़े स्कीम्स अनाउंस किए गए आप जैसे कहा क्रेडिट मुद्रा लोन की जी वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण जी संबोधित करने वाली हैं प्रेस प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस को आइए सीधे आप सी दिस इज एन इंटरिम बजट प्रेजेंटेड जस्ट बिफोर द इलेक्शन ऑब्वियसली द फोर लार्ज थिंग्स दैट आई वांट टू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन टू इज जीडीपी you get the numbers you see it and so on but i want to bring in this dimension that governance development and performance on all these three heads i'd like to say what actually we have achieved because that forms the backdrop so on governance this budget speaks from a position where we have delivered on development we better manage the economy with correct intentions correct policies and correct decisions so it's a govern governance with care conviction and confidence if that stood for the gdp g the d stands for people living better earning better and having high aspirations for the future and if i move to the p the performance three consecutive years of 7% growth fastest growing economy in g20 all parts of the country participating in the growth price stability and inflation management handling the health and economic fallout of covid build out of physical digital and social infrastructure dpa as a factor of production almost for formalization and financial inclusion and growth of the economy cleaning up the banking system gst one nation one market and one tax the ibc so if you were to look at performance i've listed some of them so your gdp as we look at governance development and performance i have something to say on each of these so this budget or vote on account is getting presented with the gdp that we want to speak to you about and in that the fiscal management actually is something which i would like you to spend some time even as you go through the budget but i'll flag it here bringing down the fiscal deficit in spite of very challenging times as per the announced consolidation path and with transparency and prudence so in fact i was just remarking to my officers this morning 
most of you all had already calculated the figures. RE revenue, RE expenditure, this is what it is. Because every month you get the reports coming out. So you don't need to wait till the budget statement. Every month you get the accounts and so budget process has become absolutely transparent and questionable if there are any you are there to question we are here to answer but we set in the process of keeping everything brought on budget and nothing kept aside from it or underneath it so with that the budget deficit fiscal deficit 5.8 percent which is much lower than the 5.9 which was at the B Similarly, for the 24-25 budget, we've given 5.1 as the fiscal deficit, so clearly indicating that we are on track to meet the glide path which was set in 2021-22 and that we are in, uh, well on track to meet the 4.5% fiscal deficit on or below uh, 4.5 even by FY26. If this is the background with which I'm talking and the presentation of the budget happened, I want to very clearly put some things under the heading, if you want to call it that, Disha Nirdeshak Bate. You must have heard the Honorable Prime Minister speak before the Parliament session, <coughs> well before the sessions commenced, his usual customary remarks. He said the budget will be presented tomorrow and you will have some Disha Nirdeshak Bhatein. So, what are those Disha Nirdeshak Bhatein? There are about uh, five of them I highlight. Social justice as effective and necessary governance model. So it's not just a slogan for us, social justice we'll have to work for Nyai. No. We've shown you that it is a governance model and a successful one at that. So social justice as an effective and governance, necessarily a governance model. Then four major caste groups, as we call it, as Prime Minister has emphasized, the poor, the, uh, the women, the youth, and the anadatta. So Disha Nirdeshak Bate, you have the second point. Third, focus on infrastructure. This year again, massive increases of capex happened in the last four years. This year too, there is 11% increase, resulting in a very recallable number, 11 lakhs, 11,111 lakh, 11 lakh, 11,111 crores. So continuing the trend of the last four years where capital expenditure has been the route one for revival earlier from COVID and now for sustained growth towards Amritka, uh, towards the Vikasit Bharat goal. Fourth is the using of technology as a huge opportunity. DPI as almost a new factor of production. So it is actually bringing in the value addition to the economy. It is facilitating every sector to bring in the value addition which is so required and improves on our productivity. And the last Disha Nirdeshak Bate is high-powered committee for extensive consideration of challenges arising from population growth and demographic challenges. So if these are Disha Nirdeshak Bate, what were the major announcements? I'll recall very quickly 12 of them. I'm not spending any time except for reading out what those 12 are. Two crore more homes under the PM Awas Yojana. We already completed nearly the three crore. Housing for middle class. Rooftop solar for at least 300 units of power generation every month, which will be muft bijli for the households. There will be some assistance and some kind of a uh, funding uh, which will be extended. So you are generating renewable energy 
providing the renewable energy generators the free that which will they uh, that which will they that which will they would want to use and over and above that the surplus that they produce can be used for selling and earning money out of it enhancement of target for Lak uh, lakpati didi from 2 crore women to 3 crore women preparing and empowering the msmes to grow and compete globally aligning regulatory envi environment for them uh, the sixth is making sure that the eastern region and when i say re eastern region i'm not talking about northeast northeast will get the attention that they've been getting all the while they will still continue to get it and they will be on the top of our priority but when i say the eastern region i'm talking about bihar jharkhand chhattisgarh and orissa making sure that they'll become the engines of growth for the new amritkal uh, india that we are trying to uh, use as a bridge towards leading to um, towards uh, Vikasid Bharat 2047 and Eastern India I've missed out on West Bengal please add it Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal next generation reforms will be carried on building consensus with states and stakeholders for reform, perform, transform three major corridors which are programs for railways for logistics efficiency and they have been explained the important point that I want to highlight there is to make sure for Vikasit Bharat you just don't need to build for better passenger convenience you need to build for better passenger convenience you need to give them safety you need to shorten the traveling time for them so one of the uh, corridor is going to give emphasis for high density routes where passengers traffic is very high we need to bring efficiencies and better safety in those areas but for Vikasit Bharat passengers need to move as they wish but equally materials raw materials um, building goods cement rare earths minerals we need them to move efficiently as well so the corridor will take care of uh, that as well so um, the synergy between movement of people and movement of goods is what is being highlighted in the three corridors that we're talking about um, ninth is ninth announcement that is urbanization looking at metro and namo bharat uh, one of the railway related things which i missed out on telling you 40,000 bogies are going to be um, improved in the standards with which they can uh, be effective rolling stock and also give the convenience in, in the passenger experience inside the bogies as well. So 40,000 coaches are going to be uh, brought up to the level of one day Bharat standards. Metro and Namo Bharat I did mention so that urban transformation through transit oriented development can happen. The tenth announcement which I draw your attention to is one lakh crore corpus for research and innovation by private sector so that's coming in at the 10th 11th is boost to tourism including spiritual tourism interest free loans will be given to states so that they can build on iconic tourist centers and the 12th one is supporting reforms in state they are separate from the development of tourism centers and therefore I want you all to have the clarity that help to centers are uh, f supporting reforms in state is slightly different from boost to tourism. There will be a white paper on economic performance of the last 10 years compared with the previous 10 years. The 12th announcement is so much a statement that I would like to make which is what I made in the budget speech as well. Government has got the trust and the confidence and the blessings of the people based on its exemplary track record of GDP, as I said, governance, development and performance, effective delivery and also on Jan Kalyan. So highlighted, highlighted points have been realized as goals 
uh, of Vik Vikasit Bharat till now and they are the realizable goals also continuing to be so because what we want to underline is we govern with good intentions, true dedication and hard work in the coming years and that's why Amrit Kal is also now called Kartavya Kal. In short, that's the budget. Thank you very much. The Finance Minister has just now encapsulated the key highlights of the budget. We'll now open the floor. Uh, we can begin with the front row here. Please go ahead, 53. Uh, please hand over the microphone here. Hello, ma'am. This is uh, Priyashmita from Informist Media. Uh, Ma'am, I wanted to know about the projections in your uh, tax collections. So tax collections are seen currently growing at about 14.4%. Your uh, April to December data shows. जाहिर तौर पे सरकार सबका साथ के साथ विकास की अवधारणा के साथ पूरे देश में काम कर रही है ताकि विकास की जो अवधारणा है वो समाज की अंतिम पंक्ति में जो व्यक्ति है वहाँ तक पहुँचे सब तक पहुँचे वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण की घोषणा का स्वागत करते हुए केंद्रीय स्वास्थ्य मंत्री डॉक्टर मनसुख मांडविया ने कहा कि आयुष्मान भारत योजना में आशा बहनों आंगनबाड़ी कर्मचारी और सहायकों को लाने के निर्णय जो है सरकार का वो स्वागत योग्य है केंद्रीय स्वास्थ्य मंत्री से बात की संसद टीवी की संवाददाता कृति मिश्रा ने आइए सुनते हैं क्या कुछ कहा स्वास्थ्य मंत्री ने नमस्कार स्वागत है आपका संसद टीवी की खास पेशकश इंडिया बजट पर मैं हूं कृति मिश्रा मेरे साथ हैं बेहद खास मेहमान देश के हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर और केमिकल्स और फर्टिलाइजर्स मंत्री मनसुख मांडविया जी सर स्वागत है आपका संसद टीवी में सर बहुत बड़ी बातें रही हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री को लेकर आज चाहे मेडिकल कॉलेजेस को बढ़ाने की बात हो सर्वाइकल कैंसर इम्यूनाइजेशन की बात हो इसके अलावा किस तरह से आगे बढ़ना है हेल्थ इंडस्ट्रीज और इम्प्रूव करना है किस तरह से आप देखते हैं आज का इंटरम बजट आज का इंटरम बजट के लिए पहले तो मैं प्रधानमंत्री जी और फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री को अभिनंदन देना चाहूंगा क्योंकि मोदी जी एक ऐसे प्रधानमंत्री है जिन्होंने हेल्थ को हॉस्पिटल से बाहर निकाल के डेवलपमेंट के साथ जोड़ा कोई देश को समृद्ध राष्ट्र बनना है तो ये प्राथमिकता होती है कि देश के नागरिक स्वस्थ हो और देश के नागरिक स्वस्थ बने उसके लिए हेल्थ एक्सेसिबल हो हेल्थ एफोर्डेबल हो सभी के लिए हो सभी जगह पे हो और मोदी जी ने उसके लिए काम करा ये बजट में आपने देखा होगा आज देश में 707 मेडिकल कॉलेज है जो पहले साढ़ा तीन हुआ करती थी दस साल में डबल हो गई फिर मोदी जी ने कहा कि हम एक कमेटी गठित करेंगे और एक कमेटी के रिकमेंडेशन के आधार पर बाकी कहां कहां मेडिकल कॉलेज खोलनी है वो सुनिश्चित करेंगे बहुत बड़ी बात है क्योंकि देश में 1000 थाउजेंड पॉपुलेशन पर वन डॉक्टर की रिक्वायरमेंट है डब्ल्यूएचओ के नॉर्म्स है उसके मुताबिक देश में डॉक्टर हो दूसरा हेल्थ सेक्टर भारत के लिए कॉमर्स नहीं है हमारे लिए सेवा है और इसलिए हमारा हेल्थ वर्क देश में तो काम करे ही करे लेकिन दुनिया में जाके भी अपनी सेवा कर सकते हैं आज आप देखो दुनिया में डॉक्टर्स ज्यादातर इंडियंस है और इंडियन डॉक्टर्स की बहुत बड़ी डिमांड है तो देश में मेडिकल की सीट जो आज डबल हुई है मेडिकल कॉलेज डबल हुई है और उसको आगे बढ़ाने की रणनीति इंटरम बजट में प्रधानमंत्री जी ने व्यक्त की दूसरा इस बजट में एक उल्लेख हुआ है एचपीवी वैक्सीन का तो सर्वाइकल कैंसर है वो महिलाओं में ज्यादातर दिखाई दिया जाता है और सर्वाइकल कैंसर से मुक्ति पा सकते हैं उसके लिए आवश्यक होता है वैक्सीनेशन उसका वैक्सीन भी इंडिजिनियस वैक्सीन वर्तमान समय में उपलब्ध हो गया है तो एफोर्डेबल कैसे हो और सभी महिला को लगे ताकि प्रतिवर्ष 70 से अस्सी हजार महिला सर्वाइकल कैंसर से मृत्यु महिला का मृत्यु हो जाता है हमें महिला को बचाना है एक महिला का मृत्यु होता है कई बच्चे अपने मां बिना हो जाते हैं कई परिवार 
अपनी पत्नी बिना हो जाते हैं ऐसी स्थिति में कोई मां को घुमाते हैं कोई पत्नी को घुमाते हैं बच्चे अपनी मां का छत्र घुमाते हैं ऐसी स्थिति में सर्वाइकल कैंसर के वैक्सीनेशन की भी चिंता की गई है बिल्कुल सर एक और बहुत बड़ी बात जो कही गई बजट में कि मटर्नल और चाइल्ड वो जो हेल्थ केयर का पूरा सिस्टम है उसको एक अम्ब्रेला स्कीम के अंडर लाया जाएगा क्या है आगे की तैयारी ये बहुत अच्छा विषय है क्योंकि मातृत्व तो मृत्यु दर वो कम हो यानी कि इंस्टीट्यूशनल डिलीवरी हो और ये डिलीवरी के दरमियान कोई माता का मृत्यु नहीं होना चाहिए और माता बच्चे को जन्म देती है तो माता और बच्चे दोनों का मृत्यु कम से कम हो ये बहुत आवश्यक थे उसको सुनिश्चित करने के लिए साइंटिफिक तरीके से उसका एनालिसिस करना उसको केयर पहुंचाना उसको कोई सुविधा ना रहे इंस्टीट्यूशनल डिलीवरी के लिए सुनिश्चित करना ये उसका एक पार्ट है दूसरा जब बच्चे पैदा होते हैं उसको इम्यून चौदह प्रकार के टीके लगते हैं चौदह साल तक चौदह प्रकार के टीके का रिकॉर्ड आपने देखा होगा कोविड के दरमियान हमने कोविन का उपयोग करके एक बहुत बड़ी डेटा बैंक तैयार की और कोई व्यक्ति ने फर्स्ट डोज लगा हो सेकंड डोज लगा हो कब लगा हो ये अपने उंगली के टेरवे पर अपने मोबाइल में ऐप पे जाके वो देख सकते थे और जब वो यहां से एयरपोर्ट पर जाते थे और जिस वक्त कोविड चल रहा था तो बाहर जाने के लिए वैक्सीनेटेड है कि नहीं है उसके लिए सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए था वैसी स्थिति में वो ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेट ले लेते थे और दुनिया में कहा भी एयरपोर्ट में जाके दिखाते थे कि देखो मैं वैक्सीनेटेड हूं मेरा कोविन का रिकॉर्ड है वैसे बच्चे का भी सारा टीका का रिकॉर्ड बने उसके लिए ये इंट्रीम बजट बजट में यू विन पर हम सारे बच्चे का वैक्सीनेशन का रिकॉर्ड रखेंगे यानी कि यू विन यूनिवर्सल इम्यूनाइजेशन रिकॉर्ड हम करेंगे ये भी प्रावधान करा गया है मैं मानता हूं कि भारत जैसे इतने बड़े देश में यूएन जैसा प्लेटफॉर्म का उपयोग करना अपने आप में बहुत बड़ी बात है जिसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इंडिया करेगा बिल्कुल सर और आखिरी सवाल एक और बहुत बड़ा टेकअवे रहा बजट इंटरम बजट में आपके मंत्रालय से रिलेटेड कि किस तरह से आगे आयुष्मान भारत के तहत इंश्योरेंस कवर जो हमारी आशा वर्कर्स है उन तक और बढ़ाया जाएगा बेहद महत्वपूर्ण अनाउंसमेंट ये ये महत्वपूर्ण अनाउंसमेंट है आज देश में 12 करोड़ फैमिली यानी कि 60 करोड़ लोगों को हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस है आपने देखा होगा आज से 10 साल पहले ओबामा ने अमेरिका में ओबामा केयर करके एक इंश्योरेंस स्कीम लॉन्च की थी और 10 करोड़ अमेरिकन लोगों को हेल्थ सिक्योरिटी दी थी और सारी दुनिया में उसकी वाहवाही हुई मोदी जी ने बारह करोड़ फैमिली यानी कि साठ करोड़ लोग अतिरिक्त इस इंट्रीम बजट बजट में अनाउंसमेंट करा कि हमारी आशा वर्कर्स है 12 लाख आशा वर्कर्स है वो उसको और उसके फैमिली को क्योंकि आयुष्मान भारत योजना फैमिली बेस्ड योज स्कीम है तो आशा वर्कर्स और आंगनवाड़ी वर्कर्स तो आंगनवाड़ी वर्कर्स शायद उसे थ्री टाइम होगी 40 लाख फैमिली ऐसे ऐड किया जाएगा आंगनवाड़ी वर्कर्स और आशा बहन जिसको पांच लाख का मुफ्त इलाज की गारंटी मिलेगी छोटे क्लास है मेहनत करने वाले क्लास है लोगों के बीच में जाने वाले क्लास है उसकी चिंता मोदी जी ने इस इंट्रीम बजट में की है मैं मानता हूं कि बहुत सराहनीय कदम है सर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सनसेट टीवी से बात करने के लिए धन्यवाद जी कैमरा पर्सन डीके पांडे और कैमरा असिस्टेंट लाल मोहर के साथ कृति मिश्रा सनसेट टेलीविजन जी केंद्रीय वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण जी इस समय प्रेस वार्ता कर रही है कई महत्वपूर्ण बातें उन्होंने कही है आइए सुनते हैं क्या कुछ प्रेस वार्ता में उन्होंने कहा है मैम आपने या, दो बड़ी स्कीम्स का ऐलान किया एक अर्बन एरिया के अंदर हाउसिंग स्कीम का दूसरा रूफटॉप सोलर के लिए मैम इसका बजट एलोकेशन कितना है एक सवाल दूसरा सवाल मैं मैम पूछना चाहूंगा डाइवेस्टमेंट के ऊपर मैम पिछली बार 51,000 करोड़ का टारगेट था वो टारगेट नहीं मीट हो पाया इस बार बजट में ये नहीं मिल पाया कि कितना टारगेट अगली बार के लिए रखा गया है और ऐसे टाइम पे टारगेट नहीं पूरा हो पा रहा है जब मार्केट इक्विटी मार्केट बहुत अच्छा परफॉर्म कर रहा है पहली बात तो मैं ये स्पष्ट करना चाहूंगा कि जो डिज इन्वेस्टमेंट है उसमें हम वैल्यू लॉकिंग का प्रिंसिपल लाते हैं आपको एक मैं छोटा सा उदाहरण देता हूं 
हमारे जो 61 लिस्टेड सी हैं और 16 पी हैं एक एक यानी कि फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी 20 में बीस इक्कीस में यानी कि तीन साल पहले उनका कंबाइंड मार्केट का पंद्रह लाख करोड़ था और आज के वक्त में वो अट्ठावन लाख करोड़ है तो हमने 42 लाख करोड़ की वेल्थ क्रिएट की है पब्लिक सेक्टर में और उसको माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डर्स जो उसमें हैं उन सबके साथ उनकी वेल्थ शेयर हुई है तो आप वेल्थ इफेक्ट नहीं देख रहे हैं आप सिर्फ उसमें से वेल्थ में से हम क्या निकाल रहे हैं लेकिन वो जो वेल्थ जनरेट करना भी इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट है एक साल लोन में हमने पच्चीस इक्कीस लाख करोड़ का पच्चीस लाख करोड़ का एडिशन किया है तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि 2014 से जब हमने चार लाख फोर पॉइंट टू लाख करोड़ का डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट किया है और फोर लाख करोड़ का हमने डिविडेंड लिया है सीपीएससी से आठ एट पॉइंट फाइव लाख करोड़ उसके मुकाबले एक ही साल में पच्चीस लाख करोड़ का हम मार्केट कैप ऐड कर रहे हैं तो ये जो वैल्यू और लॉकिंग स्टोरी इसका मतलब ये है कि आपको डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट करना है तो वेल्थ भी इंप्रूव करनी है शेयर की वैल्यू भी लेनी है और तब डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट कैलिब्रेटेड वे से करना है इसलिए सरकार ने डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट का एक तो हमने कोई फिक्स टारगेट भी इसे नहीं रखा है हमने ये कहा है कि हम एक अदर अदर रिसीट्स में एसेट मॉनिटाइजेशन और डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट हो वो सब जाते हैं और दूसरा रिसीट का एक इश्यू है कि हम कभी भी यदि हमें अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलेगी इससे ज्यादा भी कर सकते हैं लेकिन एक उसको फिक्स्ड मार्केट सिग्नल ये देना कि हम शेयर बेचेंगे ही बेचेंगे इसी प्राइस पे बेचेंगे उसके कारण उसका प्रतिकूल अरब मार्केट में पड़ता है इसलिए जो हमारा वो है अर्थ ये है कि हमारा जो रेवेन्यू है और दूसरी हमने इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रैटेजी है कि डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट और डिविडेंड ये दोनों ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन में है जब हम कंबाइंड कह रहे हैं हम नाइन्टी करेंगे तो, तो कंबाइंड आप देखिए और नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू इज द बिगेस्ट स्टोरी लगभग पचहत्तर हजार करोड़ का नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू एड हो रहा है और हाईएस्ट ग्रोथ उसमें ही है और अब लगभग एक लाख करोड़ जो है यदि आप बजट से देखें और नेक्स्ट बजट में देखें तो एक लाख करोड़ का नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू हम ऐड कर रहे हैं और नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू एड में डिविडेंड की बहुत बड़ी भूमिका है और डिविडेंड हम एक्सीड कर रहे हैं तो इसलिए आप कंबाइंड वे से इस सारे यदि इस सेक्टर को देखें तो हमको एक नई दिशा में जाने की जरूरत है जो हम गए हैं रिगार्डिंग दू स्कीम्स रूफटॉप सोलर के लिए दस हजार करोड़ का प्रोविजन है बजट में एज रिगार्ड द अर्बन हाउसिंग स्कीम इट्स कॉन्टूर्स आर बींग वर्कड आउट एंड देर इज अ टोकन एंड इट विल बी फंडेड वेन द एग्जैक्ट कॉन्टूर्स आर फाइनलाइज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज गो एट एटी वन प्लीज ओके आई मीन आई हेलो या गो एट गो एट या सर प्रकाश प्रदर्शी फ्रॉम ईटी नाउ मैम द बेनिफिट ऑफ लोअर टैक्स रेट ऑफ फिफ्टीन परसेंट हैज बीन एक्सटेंडेड फॉर स्टार्टअप एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट बाय सॉरन वेल्थ फंड्स माय क्वेश्चन इज आई मीन हैज इट आल्सो बीन एक्सटेंडेड फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट No, I'm asking. I'm seeking clarity. No, thank you. Yeah, Bloomberg, Ruchi. Uh, Ma'am, uh, some of the rating agencies have said that sure. uh, they will take a call on a ratings upgrade for India only after the next budget. But given that this budget of yours, uh, you did say that it has been transparent. Uh, you've maintained the path of fiscal prudence as well. What will be your message for rating agencies? not only aligning with the fiscal consolidation road map that we gave earlier but bettering it is that one simple straightforward message which every rating agency should take on board should take on board ha uh, ma'am yeah please Sapna, go ahead yeah sapna here from cnbc tv Ma'am, two questions. Uh, one very broad, generic, uh, excellent work in terms of fiscal consolidation. Just want to understand: uh, is it slightly ambitious to have a 5.1 number right away in the interim budget? I mean, broadly expectation was July budget. Uh, you know, you will start kind of. No, 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 no. I, I don't mean that. 
Uh, no, no, no. I don't mean that. But just try to understand. Like in two years, you'll be able to do below 4.5 percent. Very broad understanding, ma'am. One is that. Second, ma'am, you're talking about next generation reforms. Uh, within that context, the government has had a you know a massive privatization agenda. Uh, there doesn't seem to be you know any mention of that as of now. Just to him, Sapna, you're asking the same thing. No, but yeah. you went elaborately on it. But will you still be sticking to it? Just broadly want to understand. Hmm. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Tim C. Jaipuria from CNBC TV 18. Ma'am, uh, in your budget speech, you've given a very uh, ambitious target of 1 lakh crore worth of a fund for private sector for research and innovation, where you've promised 50 year interest free loan. If you could give the contours of this scheme, which are the sectors who will be benefit in terms of the private sector, which are the specific sectors who can avail this uh, corpus, and uh, what kind of uh, work? or research and innovation are we focusing on sectors and how the scheme will work so I'll tell you the quantitative part and secretary EA can expand on the sectors uh, there is the one lakh crore is a provision over a period of time as the need emerges this will be provided as a 50 year interest free loan to a financial institution which will be identified which will be within the uh, government ambit of financial institutions who will then finance or refinance projects at long tenors and at concessional rates of interest. Money has been provided in this budget in the Department of Economic Affairs for multiple purposes including this one. So there is a provision for this in the Department of Economic Affairs which covers many other things also. As regards the sectors, I'll leave uh, Secretary. See, as announced in the budget is speech, these are the sunrise sectors. And what is the economic logic behind it? These are the innovations and research. Investments are needed today. And the private sector, the returns will come a couple of years down the road. And those couple of years can be four years, five years, ten years. For some investments, it can be even longer. So it will not be commercially viable for private sector to invest if it were to be a commercial money for them. So this is what the fund will help them. Clear identification of those sunrise sectors will be through a stakeholder process. Yeah, business line. Yeah. Yeah. Namaskar, ma'am. Sheshir here. Uh, just two clarity, ma'am. One is about the TCS. Some changes have been made in the TCS uh, on the LRS. Uh, so what are those changes? There is uh, not much clarity because explanatory memorandum is not there. And the second part is the housing scheme. Will it be just like an interest subvention scheme or what will be the contour of that? <clears throat> so you are aware that, uh, you know, sometime I think uh, last year, maybe in June or July, uh, there was a press release in which uh, the TCS rates were later on changed from what were announced in the budget of 23-24. So basically it is just to align those TCS rates with what was announced in the press release. There is no further change uh, from what was announced in the press release. Your question on housing was? Uh, what will be the controls? The, the, it's still being worked out. Uh, interest subvention? Will there it could be one of the features of the scheme, but nothing has been finalized yet. It's under discussion between Department of Financial Services, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Multiple options are being considered on how to achieve the purpose that has been set out. Uh, hello, ma'am. Ruchika Chitravanshi from Business Standard. Uh, one question was regarding the, uh, relating to the announcement you made about the withdrawal of uh, demand for outstanding tax, uh, what will be the cost to exchequer for the tax that will be foregone? And second, a small clarification, the 75,000 crore 50-year uh, loan that, uh, that is linked to the milestone, milestone reforms, yeah. is that in addition to the uh, 1.3 or is it part of it? So uh, uh, all of you would, have, you would be aware you know, that uh, there are a large number of small demands that are pending with respect to income tax, wealth tax, gift tax. Uh, the number in all about uh, 2.68 crore uh, such demands. Uh, the total amount of course is very high which is 35 lakh crore of outstanding demand. A lot of it is in litigation. 
but many of these demands about 1. Point, uh, about 2.1 crore in fact 2.1 crore out of 2.68 lakh demands are valued less than 25000 rupees now many of these demands are very very old dating from you know 1962 when income tax act was first, uh, was uh, was enacted and right now till you know very recently till you know today so uh, this has been causing a lot of hindrance especially for the talk, uh, taxpayers because these demands are very old uh, many of them are unreconciled because of systemic issues we shifted you know our uh, cpc uh, all all the tax records centralized them in 2010 11 year and so that's why a cutoff has been taken at 10 11 because previously the demands were decentralized and so we are unable to you know verify many of them causing disruption and hindrance in payment of refunds so out of this 2.1 crore uh, demands which are less than 25000 rupees uh, about 58 lakh demand entries for for the uh, period pertaining to financial year 9 10 and then from 10 11 these are less than 25,000, as already announced by the Honorable Finance Minister. And another 53 lakh entries pertaining to the remaining five years from 11, 10, 11 to 14, 15. So 1.1 crore uh, uh, small demands, 25,000 and 10,000 for the five years. Uh, these are being remitted. The total amount is less than 3,500 crore rupees. Yeah. The 75,000 crores is part of the 1,30,000 crores. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead. Um, hi, ma'am. This is Pushpita from the core. You mentioned about that nearly 40,000 real bogies will be converted to Vande Bharat standard. But if we look at the price of Vande Bharat, it's comparatively higher than the other ticket prices. So considering the affordability of the passengers, what will be the pricing and how will it be decided? If you could. It's up to the railways, but Vande Bharat trains are one thing. The bogies 40,000 being upgraded to the Vande Bharat standard is another thing altogether. Those bogies probably cannot even take the speed with which we want to improve the high density areas with better speedy uh, transportation for the common man. Equally, the inside bogie experience is also not up to the mark because they have been so for a very long time and as uh, time passed by their quality has also come down a bit. So we are talking about the bogey quality matching with the Vande Bharat standards. As to which of those lines of traffic that they will get connected to and as a result what will be the rationalization of the ticket price is not something that we can talk about. That's something which the railways will work out gradually. But progressively, that point proves that through the 40,000 bogies that we're talking about, the quality of the Indian rail bogies, which are so important for safe travel and also ease of living travel uh, and comfort, will need upgradation. And this is what we're aiming. Yeah. Please speak into the microphone. Yeah, good evening, Minister. Uh, Minister, you had announced an aggressive uh, plan for privatization of two government banks a couple of years back. So is that proposal still on table? And my second question is, uh, your thoughts on the shrinking uh, successively, uh, every successive year, we've been seeing the divestment receipts shrinking. So your thoughts on that? I thought uh, Tuhin had explained the second part of your question, but never mind, I'll ask him to again probably explain it. The disinvestment receipts, as you say, is that, you know, is basically you part with your wealth, which is the shares or a property, and convert it in and monetize it. Now, there is a wealth effect also there, and we have partners, which are the listed companies, the minority shareholders. If we, our point is that we are also, you know, taking care of GDP, as FMM mentioned, in respect of CPSCs. If you look at the CPSC's performance, whether it comes to capex of 3.2 lakh crore, 
whether it is their growth story, whether their investment in green energy, whether their performance in return on capital employed, whether you look at return on equity. On all fronts, we are seeing that they are big market players. They continue to improve and therefore they continue to reward shareholders, including the government. Government is a majority shareholder, but a large part of our shareholders are minority shareholders. So therefore, any strategy, calibrated disinvestment strategy, which will actually do the sum over a period of time is much more than that. And besides, the shares also give you dividend. And we have a consistent dividend policy too. And money is fungible. So we have to have a new paradigm in terms of thinking about and not to just keep on parting with our wealth at one stroke. We can always do it in a gradual, calibrated way. Uh, we'll take a question from the right side, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, I have a question on this committee on demographic change uh, challenges. Uh, ma'am, what, what would be the mandate? What are the areas it would look at? Will it be urbanization? Will it also include issues around, you know, uh, this, uh, this whole issue about constituencies, political constituencies, given that some the northern states have uh, grown faster? Uh, also, two clarifications. One is on the uh, 70,000 crore with DEA uh, for new schemes. What kind of schemes, apart from solar rooftop, uh, are, are, are budgeted for? And two, on this issue of uh, tax, uh, these small disputes, does the 25,000 include uh, only the principal amount or is it interest and penalty uh, for that 25,000? Uh, on, the, on the provision for Department of Economic Affairs, this has two components. There are certain specific announcements that have been made and those are provided for. In addition, there is a large increase in our capital expenditure budget. We have, as was done in the year 2022-23, we have kept this in the Department of Economic Affairs to be allocated to whichever department requires it at the pace that it's able to absorb so that we have flexibility to allocate it to whichever department is able to absorb it fastest, whether it's railways, highways, telecom, we have all of them and they are all essentially eligible to take this money when the requirement arises so that we have flexibility to optimize its utilization. Uh, hello, ma'am. As to your, uh, let me answer the second part. As to your question, uh, as to whether uh, uh, the 25,000 rupees uh, amount, which is remitted, being withdrawn, you know, till the year 9, 10, and 10,000 being remitted from 10, 11 to 14, 15. Let me clarify that this is the amount of demand which is mentioned in our books, and so when this demand is actually entered, then it will include even the interest till the point of, till the point, you know, when the demand was actually assessed and entered. So it refers, to, it, so it includes the interest till that period, that point of time. And any interest which accrues later on is also withdrawn. Yeah, the front row, left side, please. Hello, ma'am. Uh, ma'am. Uh, See, when we talk about uh, demography, it is an opportunity, it is uh, a challenge. And uh, the current numbers, how the changes are happening over a period of time. So this committee will have uh, a mandate to have an extensive consideration uh, of those challenges and the opportunities and come out with a specific set of recommendations. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I am Monica from the New Indian Express. Ma'am, in your budget speech, you mentioned about the India Middle East uh, Europe Economic Corridor. So, given the fact that there are conflicts in the Middle East region, so is the project still on track? And also, when the French president was here, was there any discussion on the corridor? Well, uh, it's been announced and we are taking it forward. Yes, there is significant disturbance in the Red Sea area and the Middle East, but this is a project which has long-term implications for the entire region, region up to Europe, because it also includes Europe. So yes, we will be taking this project forward. We will be consulting and taking it uh, in all its contours. 
the second uh, last ma'am uh, himanchu shekhar from uh, kmm yeah ntv india uh, second last uh, madam ma'am ek mahatvapurna ghoshna aapne ki hai pradhan mantri awas yojana ko lekar agle 5 saal mein aap 2 crore ghar banayenge kya ye faisla hua hai ki isme se kitne ghar aap gramin ilakon mein banayenge aur kitne shaharon mein jaisa ki pehle gramin ओ ग्रामीण के लिए हाँ, बनाएंगे ग्रामीण इस... के लिए दो करोड़ और और घर बनाएंगे हाँ। और ये टू करोड़ नाइन्टी फाइव लाख का जो आपका टारगेट था वो आपने पूरा हो गया थ्री करोड़ वी आर क्लोज टू अचीविंग थ्री एंड ओवर एंड अब द थ्री क्रोज ये दो करोड़ दो करोड़ है और इसके लिए फाइनेंशियल कुछ इस्टिमेशन हुआ है कितना एलोकेशन करेंगे आप Correct. So allocation is provided for. It will be supplemented when the costing is worked out for okay. these additional. Okay. Okay. But there is a provision to kick it off in the coming year. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I, you, you mentioned the mandate, which I think we want a bit, a bit more clarity on that. Uh, is it going to be something similar to the population control bill that has been uh, spoken about in the past, or is it going to have a different mandate, which is needed? Uh, right uh, say the budget speech says, and I'm uh, already uh, responded to that. Uh, wait for the terms of reference to come out, and uh, uh, then you will get to know the exact details. But overall approach is, uh, it is a huge opportunity, but there are challenges. Both have to be uh, taken note of, and appropriate responses uh, to be taken. So that's really that broad idea I can share with you. And terms of reference will come out in due course. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, ma'am. This is Parth Singh from Outlook Business. Uh, since you spoke about bringing the East India to pace in terms of development, I wanted to uh, ask you: How does the government plans to address the industrial gap uh, in, to, in, to help these states in a free market economy? And uh, for example, uh, more than 70% of the PLI projects are currently concentrated into just three states. So I wanted to ask you that. They are not concentrated in three states because we want them to be concentrated in three states. If there are investments happening, and if there is going to be production in any other non-three states that you want to talk about, PLI will be extended to them as well. It doesn't go on the criteria of geography. It grows on the criteria of manufacturing. It grows on the criteria of how many additional units are produced. I just want to add to that. The public sector investments have gone substantially to the eastern region. Whether you look at gas pipelines, new fertilizer plants, or even new uh, LHB railway uh, um, um, rolling stock, which is being manufactured in Bihar. So, a considerable amount of the public sector investment is focused on the eastern region. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, if I can add on this particular one, uh, as we are, we are all aware, a special districts program. in those districts is making a very significant change 60% of those districts happen to be in eastern india and when the people are better educated etc etc then more economic opportunities get generated there because skill man power is available in those areas so we'll see over a period of time and that is what the government will also be providing appropriate support ma'am this is nivedita mukherjee from the sunday garden uh, This, this is with regard to the national modernisation pipeline that was launched in uh, August 9, 2021. And with regard to your focus on infra in this budget, do we see also that uh, going forward? And what has been the progress? Uh, Ma'am, these are two different things. A very large part of infra assets are held by those infra agencies or the public sector undertakings. so as they embark upon their more capital investment they also monetize some of their assets and plow it back some of the assets are owned by the government so those monetization proceeds come to the government so that one is going on and that periodically those numbers come out and if i recall next year is also very ambitious number uh, for monetization uh, but everything doesn't come to the government there uh, um Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, actually, could you please uh, please elaborate? identify yourself, then ask a okay. question. I am Bani Kinkar Patnaik from the Economic Times. Um, Ma'am, uh, could you please elaborate a bit on the proposed changes uh, in 
the calculation of agricultural income under the new tax regime. And uh, ma'am, uh, on the 75,000 crore uh, loan. So under the new tax regime, income from agriculture? Yes, yes. Huh? Yes. I mean, some, rep we? some reports I saw, ma'am, that's why I'm... I'm not fine. here to answer some reports. <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, Mum, uh, oh, on this 75,000 crore, you know, uh, interest-free loans to states, uh, since it is part of 1.3 lakh crore allocation under capex, so will the same, uh, you know, reforms conditions continue, or will there be additional reforms conditions? The specifics will be worked out, and it will be reform linked. What reforms, how much, for what, is something that will come when the guidelines are issued. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Hi, ma'am. Uh, this is Vikas from the Hindu. Uh, in last year's finance bill debate, uh, during the debate, you had announced the formation of a new committee uh, to review the national pension system benefits to central government employees. And there was an expectation that, you know, by uh, six months or so, we might have some outcomes that you could consider. So, uh, can we expect that anytime soon, or do you think that might be left for the full budget now? One. And secondly, you've talked about, you've committed your government to, you know, taking forward the next generation reforms. Uh, I want to get some sense of what are our priority areas there. And lastly, uh, sorry to take a stab at it again, but this population uh, growth committee that we're looking at, uh, is it likely to happen after the census? Because we've not had a census for a while. And as per the National Family Health Survey 2020 numbers that we have, our total fertility rate is already below the replacement rate at around two. So is, the, is there some way that we're looking at keeping our population stable at a certain level or to reduce it over a broader period? You, want to, you may want to help me by saying question number one, question number two. I'll go on answering. You seem to have asked me about five different questions, right? Please go ahead. What was your first? Uh, sorry. NPS NPS was first. Once we are ready with the report we will uh, let you know there is no I don't think there was a time given we said at the earliest they will give the report yeah so that right. stays there what's the second second was ma'am some sense of the priority areas for next generation reforms Ajay you want to add in there uh, see you would have noticed that uh, a particular section and extensively covered that what will be the broad strategies uh, for the next several years getting into those so those are the indications that that can be the broad area for the reforms, the next generation of reforms. But that's not an exhaustive list, but the broad sense you can get it from there. Yeah. And the third was, ma'am, the population <laughs> bit. The third, third was the population bit, ma'am. Yeah. I think that's his answer. Yeah. I think, I mean, please confine to one question because, I mean, a lot of many, a lot many questions are still there. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, Janani from NDTV Profit. Uh, ma'am, I would like to get some perspective on some of the uh, scheme outlays. Uh, one being uh, the capex infusion to OMCs uh, in FI 24 budget. There was 35,000. Um, 30,000 for retrofitting, petroleum retrofitting for OMCs. Um, this, in the revised estimate, it was said that 15,000 only would be allotted ahead of the budget, but later we have seen that the same 15,000 amount is there for FY25. Just want to understand if the same has been deferred. And uh, also on the fertilizer subsidy, uh, consider comparatively it's lesser, so the reason or reasons are behind that math. Uh, on the oil marketing company public investment, the requirements were reassessed and um, it's also been deferred to next financial year. So what, and uh, it has not been provided in the revised estimate. So it was not that it was provided, I mean, they're just coming out with the revised estimate. So it is not going to be in this financial year. It's been provided for in the next financial year. And the second part was? Uh, fertilizer subsidy. Fertilizer subsidy is estimated based on recent trends in global ammonia and fertilizer prices, which have been on a downward trend for the last six months. So it's our current estimate based on the best information we have right now, which is very different from the prices which were there during the early part of this year. Adhija from Money Control, uh, you have assumed a nominal GDP of uh, 10.5 for the budget. So that would, uh, just wanted to know the division between uh, the real GDP growth and the deflator. 
Uh, also, uh, the tax collection growth is seen at 11.5, if I'm not wrong. So there seems to be a more significant gap between the two, which we've seen a trend in the past. Uh, one more clarity, I'm sorry for adding. Uh, this is with regard to um, a mention that uh, the average real income of people have increased by 50% with moderate inflation uh, mentioned in the speech. I uh, just want to clarify, is this linked to investment rate or per capita income? Thank you. Uh, answer. Uh, again, you have to help me out and you ask two, three questions. So again, for the budget purposes, it is the nominal GDP which is relevant. That's how the fiscal deficit and other deficit numbers are done. So that estimate is 10.5%. And I recall last year, again, several of you said that are we underestimating, overestimating, etc. We said we have a realistic number. Of course, this year it has been a little lower, 8.9. So our sense is that next year, 10 and 10.5% nominal growth rate is a reasonable number. As far as real growth is concerned, the breakup, breakup is not a budget issue. You would have seen the document which Chief Economic Advisor has brought out just two days back and he has extensively covered his take on what the real growth would be and so you would have read that document uh, uh, already. Your second question? The 50% statement. 50% is a, I said that that announcement or rather the data which has been shared in the budget is in real terms. So that has nothing to do with inflation. You are combining the two issues here. They say on a constant prices, income has gone up by 50 percent. There's, there's yet another statement which is coming up. There has been a moderate inflation. Inflation has been kept within the policy band, except for the post-pandemic period. If you take the 10-year period, it has been well within the policy band. I'll request... I'll, I'll, just, clarify, I'll just clarify this. I think the, the, the reference to the growth in real per capita income is 56% is the growth between FY14 and FY23. That's what ma'am was referring to in her speech. And 57% growth in real per capita GDP. Okay? That is what she was referring to. Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi, ma'am. Meghna Mittal from Money Control. The government has announced in the budget lowering the market borrowing exponentially or the gross market borrowing. Um, So I just wanted to understand what gives the confidence uh, to the government that they'll be able to lower the market borrowing amid the global challenges and the capex increase uh, that has been announced. So I think uh, you, the confidence comes from the numbers that are presented. So if the revenue numbers are realistic, if the expenditure numbers are realistic, then the deficit number is realistic. That deficit number is then broken up into sources of financing. And uh, in, we have taken a 10.5% nominal growth rate, 11.5% uh, revenue growth rate, which is a buoyancy of less than 1.1. This year we have achieved 12 plus with a nominal growth of 8.9. So I think a very decent, very conservative uh, buoyancy has been assumed. In addition, the expenditure numbers are realistic. We have provided for everything. Therefore, the deficit numbers are achievable. And the borrowing breakdown is given here in terms of how much is market, how much is small savings. Small savings, we have shown a declining trend in uh, resources from small savings. We have shown a declining trend in external debt. And that is reflected in these borrowing numbers. So these are very realistic borrowing numbers. On the gross borrowing coming down, next year, some of the uh, repayments of loans taken will not be happening from the consolidated fund. They are repayments of the GST back-to-back -back loans. So they don't necessarily lead to new gross borrowing. So there is a slight recalibration between the growth of the net, in fact not the growth, the decline in the net borrowing is gentle, the decline in the uh, gross borrowing is steeper. But there is a reason for it. So it's very realistic. Uh, Good evening. So and coming down now to 5.1%, even with a higher uh, GDP number. Borrowings are lower, and with that path, it is expected to be lower as well. 
Good evening, ma'am. From the middle row. Uh, yeah. Good evening, ma'am. This is Sanjay Agarwal. Uh, I first like to congratulate the entire. I'm Sanjay Agarwal. I work for PN News, ma'am. It's a what newspaper. News? This is a newspaper, ma'am. What news? It's PN News. It's a newspaper. It's a bilingual, ma'am. Yeah. So PN? I PN News. How do you spell it? It's P for uh, per, uh, press and for nation. P N P N. Uh, P -N. Uh. Yeah. So first, like to congratulate you. You've uh, made history by presenting the sixth consecutive budget. Uh, my question has already been taken by another friend. Uh, I want to know that uh, you're talking about income tax demands, as Sir explained Sanjayji, that uh, there have been uh, about uh, the borrowings is 14.13 lakh crores, and this, uh, your effect is 3.8 CR. So wouldn't it affect? And wouldn't be a come uh, like in the future? There are a lot of court. You said that you said that's going to be people are going to say, okay, wave off our demands. Is this not going to set a wrong uh, means? I don't know what should I call yes. it, ma'am. See, as I mentioned to you, most this should not be seen as a waiver because, as I mentioned in the year 10-11, we shifted our records which were previously maintained at zonal levels or state state levels and which were you know mostly paper records or if they were you know computerized then you know they were held you know in computers locally there was no central record so in the year 10 11 we shifted this centrally to our central processing center now in bangalore a lot of those demands you know which are over there, they have actually been paid for by the taxpayers. Because when we reach out to them and we tell them, you know, this is a demand, this is a small demand, of course, but they say, well, you know, we have already paid it. But the records were not with us because they were all decentralized. And so uh, mostly these demands are actually not existing. They are existing on paper, but they are not actual demands. They are mostly fictitious and they are not going to yield any revenue. Some of them, of course, are very, very small, one rupee, two rupee, you know, less than 10 rupees. So it's not a waiver. That's why Honorable FM in her speech has not called it a waiver. It's just a withdrawal, it's just a correction of entries. Uh, Ma'am, shall we conclude, or you would you like to take one or two questions? More? No, just those who are shown there. Yes. We go to the middle row. Yeah. Yeah. No supplementaries. <laughs> And now, please confine to one question now, all of you, the three of you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, congratulations to you and everybody. Karishma, this side from Business Today. Ma'am, if you look at the Manrega allocation, if you see the trend for the last few years, whatever has been budgeted, usually the revised allocation goes, of course, slightly a bit more. And if the trend carries on, it could be seen in FY25 also that you may have to allocate more in the next budget. I'd like to understand from that point of view, ma'am, is the center happy with the way the scheme is working, especially in co cooperation from the states? First of all, Manrega allocation is not done on the basis of a trend. It is based on the demand coming from the ground. That is one answer for your first question. But on your second, much more than me commenting, CAG has commented on the way Manrega is operating in some states where claims are all uh, reaching a stage where they need to be verified. Are they really existing people in the ground? Are people not really those for whom the payments are going? And questions critical to the very spirit, letter and spirit of that program. So to that extent, the CAG reports themselves highlight where course corrections will have to happen in those respective say, states. I'm not saying a problem existing in one state is the same across board. Some states may do with some kind of a problem, some others do with other kind of problems and so on. So that has to be addressed differently from are you gradually coming down in terms of allocation. You're putting two and two together which may not be right. 
Ma'am, hello. This is Surbhi from Business Today magazine. Uh, Ma'am, I wanted to understand by when will the white paper that you have announced be, uh, come out and will it be done by the Finance Ministry? And secondly, Ma'am, on CapEx, do we uh, foresee any uh, slowdown in CapEx this fiscal because we have about two and a half, two months left now and we'll have the model code of uh, conduct coming in. So the, the, no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, of this is, so just wanted your thoughts on that. Thank you. something on which all of you are very happy. Oh yes, it has come out. And because of the multiply effect, you're just having a bearing on the recovery. And now not recovery, but sustainable growth and high growth and so on. So, I'm quite surprised. Sorry. I'm quite surprised that questions are already coming saying your increase is not sufficient. Is it going to be absorbed or not? I mean, varying words used for that. We believe that CapEx from the government will continue and we've given a good number this time also and it is important to continue as well. Uh, just to uh, add to this point, model code of conduct, no new work can be started. Mm. So whenever the model code of conduct work come, now in the balance two months of the current financial year, it will, ongoing works will go on with full pace. There is absolutely no bar on continuing with those works. This is Sumit Chaturvedi from ET now. Uh, again, the question is, uh, you said there will be white paper on pre and post 2014 economy. What is the timeline for that? You said it will be coming soon. And ma'am, also, just to add a similar question, because what would be the parameters on which uh, both periods uh, comparison will happen? Because they, they were both the different periods with different kind of challenges. Comparison is always between two different periods only. I can't compare myself my, on myself today, this minute, can I? They have to be varying periods to compare. It has to be so. On the timeline, ma'am? Yeah. Parameters, ma huh? Parameters. Wait when the white paper is laid down. Yeah. Uh, the last evening, question, please. Here. I am Nikun Johri from Reuters, requesting some clarity on the gross borrowing, uh, lowering of the gross borrowing, market borrowing for next year. Uh, one of the annex share to the document, budget document says that maturing debt would be met through GST compensation fund. So, uh, ask. Uh, wanted to, you to clarify whether this relates only to the back-to-back -back loans that were given to states yes, earlier. Yes, absolutely yes. only to that. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you very much. I mean, it was an elaborate press conference. And thank you very much for your presence, everybody. Thanks a lot. तो आप देख रहे थे निर्मला सीतारमण जी की प्रेस वार्ता और इस प्रेस वार्ता में निर्मला सीतारमण के साथ साथ वित्त मंत्रालय के अधिकारियों ने पत्रकारों के हर सवाल का अंतरिम बजट से जुड़े हर सवाल का उत्तर विस्तार पूर्वक दिया करीब डेढ़ घंटे की इस प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में इस प्रेस वार्ता में वित्त मंत्री ने देश की अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़े सामाजिक कल्याण से जुड़े हर उस मुद्दे का जवाब दिया जो पत्रकारों ने उनसे पूछा जाहिर सी बात है अर्थव्यवस्था को लेकर सरकार स्पष्ट है सरकार का अंतरिम बजट स्पष्ट है पिछले नौ सालों में सरकार ने जो वित्त के पहलू पर आर्थिक क्षेत्र में जो कार्य किए हैं उसका उल्लेख अंतरिम बजट में वित्त मंत्री ने किया साथ ही आगे का जो रोड मैप है अंतरिम बजट से उसका भी संकेत मिलता है उसका भी संदेश मिलता है आ, मेरे साथ दो खास मेहमान